Um, I may have probably interest on this because I'm trying to run the, I didn't know until she came, but we're close friends with one of the presenters, so I may refuse on this issue. It's your decision. Yeah. Do you feel, do you feel you need to? I probably should. Yeah. Okay. Well, then would you just leave it? Um, you'll have to leave the room. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't type as fast as you'll have to try. <laughs> we'll bring you back after. Thank you for coming. Okay, now I'd like to just make a brief note for the address is 226, 1936. Oh, I did that before. It's on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to make that correction on the agenda for 226. Sorry, I have, I have it right here. Kristen Scanlon and Victor Colby and Miller, and they are the owners of Ruka, Ted Kennedy, Matt Williams, and Sean Williams, and also the owner of City Ballet, which is the ballet. Um, Company. I'd like to thank you for having us all back here. It's nice to see some familiar faces again. Um, as you know, we were here before you last month on Luca's application for a valid parking permit. Um, at that time, discussions and the vote were tabled so that you folks can address uh, the issues and concerns that were raised at the last meeting. Since then, uh, we've gone before Nura, who last week voted to support the application. So. At this time, and instead of going through the presentation, as we've already decided again, you know, I'd love to just continue any discussion or further questions or concerns that any folks or anybody in the room has about the application or the proposal for the the uh, valley parking permit. One of the reasons why it was tabled last time by um, our council was because there was question of what the signage was out right. in that area. Um, so why don't you tell us what you think? It is. We, we did our own little private investigation. Right. So we determined, you'll see on that board there that's given a pass, that the signage in front of Luca indicates from 8 a.m. till noon is uh, commercial parking. And then from noon until 8 p.m. is two-hour uh, parking. And then after 8 p.m., it's kind of free-for-all, for lack of better terms, not resident or visitors, so anybody can park there from 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. until the cycle uh, begins again with the parking. Council members, questions, comments? Um, I, I was here last time, and I apologize um, that I got caught up to speed before the meeting. I, I have a concern with, um, with creating two valley spots in this part of Hanover, where I realize there's, there's a need for it. Um, but, you know, we're, we try to do the best we can in the neighborhood to uh, preserve resident parking. I realize this isn't a resident parking um, spot, but, you know, technically it could be considered resident parking from, you know, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. You take away two spots, you know, there's two spots for people that are coming home late at night, driving around the neighborhood looking for a spot, and they count on, you know, a spot like that to be able to park there until 8 a.m. So, um, that's my concern with, with creating these two valet spots. I realize, you know, it'd be what, from 8 to 11, the valet spots, the hours for that? From 5 to midnight, but winding down around 11-ish. Okay, and, but a car, a valet car could technically be there past midnight? No. No, it'd have to be gone. They right. like only sit in that zone for a yeah. few minutes, like okay. constantly. I mean, that, that's just my immediate impression of, of just, you know, taking away two spots. I realize it's not, it's not considered resident, but you know, some you know people do count on those spots. Then, and, you know, if you give uh, two spots to you, then you know two other people want a spot. Then all of a sudden, before you know it, all of Hanover, from you know five till midnight, is just is, is valet. Um, that that's my concern. We understand that that's a concern that's been raised, um, and we certainly understand the sensitivity of the request that's being made, just because of the issues and concerns that have been raised with how the valet situation works now with the shared zone in front of Fiore. This is uh, just something we've put on the table, put the application, get the ball rolling to at least try and help, you know, the, the issue at least 50% of the time. I don't know if uh, some of you are aware, or most of you are aware, but Joe Tetchy's had six valet spots in front of it. And since that closed, those valet spots became available. So we're not necessarily looking to add valet spots into the North End neighborhood, but just utilize six that did, or two of the six that be became available. So we do understand that the concern, especially because it's Hanover Street and the Main Street. I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think some of those valet spots were also, weren't two of them given as resident spots? Or 
to discuss. Two of the six. I think they were. Yeah, I think two of the six were actually given resident spots. Um, so it's, it's it's just a concern, you know. I have right. Because right. then there's four thousand permits given for fifteen hundred estimated spots. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a tight crunch right there. You know, you take two here, two there. And it's it's pretty significant. Any other council members want to make that? Yeah, I have my question. question. Just yeah. one second. Sorry, yes. My question is to the valet. What is the advantage of having your own better than sharing what they're doing? I mean, from being down there for you know, a few years now, it's, there's no question that if there was another place to pull the cars into, it would just make our job, and I think the traffic would just be, everything would run a lot smoother, it'd be so much easier to operate. Um, I mean, we manage what we have now. If you, I mean, it, it's just, there's, there's, so many, there's so many things. I mean, I'll forget about the fact that they have their own customers that just miss the valley zone in front of Fiori and pull up in front of their restaurants, and then you have the thing where they either do U-turns or try to back up, and it just causes traffic in that sense. If you forget all that and just say it's a perfect world, and the Fiori customers pull into their zone, and we pull the car out and bring it to the garage, and the Luca customers pull into their zone and pull it out, it just everything would run so much smoother. It's just an extra place for the cars to get out of the street and be brought to the garage. It's, I mean, it is what it is. There's, there's a ton of traffic. You know, parking is, is what it is. The garage is far. You, I need to put a lot of staff on the street to manage it. I mean, the way I see it is, and just from being down there, my experience, it just be so much easier. You have staff in front of Lucas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just so much like putting extra people on the street. It's just that instead of having everybody in front of Fiori's trying to move cars as quickly as possible, they would just be spaced out more, and I'd have an extra place for the cars to pull in and pull out. And I, I mean, it, it would run smoother. Any other council so, members? Yeah, I just have a question in regards to the concern that we have, or at least I'm speaking for myself, that I have that, you know, if you, you know, say this is all right for Luca, um, and then, you know, next meeting, there's two other restaurants, right, you know, right to your side, to your left, across the street, saying it's the same thing. How, is, how do we avoid or how, how should, why shouldn't we be concerned with the fact that we're creating a slippery slope? We understand that thought and that concern if, you know, it's, if it sets a precedent for other restaurants coming and wanting the same thing. But I think what we have here is a specific set of factors which you would, you know, with anybody coming before you making a similar request. Because of the nature of the two businesses that have the shared valley zone now, you're dealing with a capacity, shared, or shared capacity, both restaurants with 500 people. So the amount of cars that are coming uh, to both restaurants and utilizing the valet service uh, by having the two additional valet spots in front of Luca so that they can man their own station and have double the manpower, double the people on the road to move cars out of there quicker and more efficiently, we just think because of the factors that are at hand and the issues that have been raised as concerns with how it operates now, that this is, you know, it's different from just setting a precedent for, well, if, you know, Luca has it, then why shouldn't everybody else? I think because of what is on the table, that's what makes it a little different than any request that would come, you You're know. saying because of the capacity of the restaurant is what, is what the reason is? Right. As one so of the big, big factors. Right. Why they would have, why you would have any other restaurant. Yeah. Uh, we also think because of the proximity to the garages that are used, just the, the, the width of the street, the, you know, the, the, the parking situation, the way it is, we look at it as, you know, everybody who stands before you with anything has to, you know, to pretty much stand on their own merit. We're here because we think it actually solves a problem. And, I mean, like uh, Kristen said, I mean, it's 500 people and two restaurants. Those are the two largest restaurants in the neighborhood. It, to me, it, you know, just this individual situation seems to be, make sense. You have to figure out you know, when people come before you what makes sense and what doesn't. I mean, having putting two resident spots there would, would help solve a problem too, you know? So, I mean, it would probably be easier for, I mean, I have to agree with what Ryan said in regards that, you know, we're trying to create resident spots. And, and believe me, there are a lot of, uh, Areas in the neighborhood that um, they're kind of like no restriction. In this, I know the city's been um, been looking into creating um, more resident spots in those areas. And actually, the city is right now um, trying to um, 
exempt residents, re people with resident permit parking stickers will be exempt from the two hour limit. So on Hanover Street, you're gonna see two hour parking and, and very shortly you're gonna see except resident, except not then resident. So if you have a sticker, you don't have a two hour limit. So um, the reality is, yeah, we have way too many people living here with vehicles in, like Ryan said, we only have 1,500 spots. Um, would I rather see resident parking there? Yeah, I would, and I know I live on Hanover Street, but I live, you know, down towards some other, and I know it's uh, it's chaotic up there, so it's it's really difficult even to just navigate through that part of the neighborhood. But I mean, you guys have a shared zone now with Fury, and I know it's not a perfect world. It kind of you'd probably much rather be sharing the zone, but the zone be in front of your restaurant as opposed to Fury, and I'm sure Tresco would rather have the zone in front of Tresco than in front of Brico. Um, you have valet. I just uh, I understand you want the spot in front of your restaurant, but not everyone in the neighborhood gets to have valet. I mean, you guys are pretty fortunate to have it, just to have the valet. I mean, why can't La Piccola Venezia have valet? You know, because their restaurant's not big enough, and it, they only serve pasta and meatballs as opposed to uh, uh, filet mignon. I'm, I'm not. I, I like. I love Luca. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that everyone could make an argument and say, hey, well, you know what, I know they have a high-end menu and they have a very, and you guys do have a pretty big, one of the bigger, it's probably the biggest restaurant in the neighborhood, you and Fury, you guys are probably the top two in terms of capacity. But, um, you know, why can't, I don't know, why can't um, the Florentine have valet or why can't um, Massimino's have valet or, and I understand that the spots in front of Techies are gone now. I mean, but, I mean, to be honest with you, Tetchy's really wasn't that busy over the last few years, so it wasn't really an issue down there. But there are still valet spots. No, I understand that. that. I understand. You know, just, it's the just, same with the beer and wine licenses. We kind of move right. them around. It's like a chessboard. Right. You know what I mean? I understand. Just that. to address what you brought up, too, about, you know, for instance, Tresca and Brico, they have a shared valet zone, but their storefronts are also right next door to each other. We're dealing with three spots in between, or three other storefronts mm -hmm. in between Fiore and Luca which we think is half the problem that we're dealing with now and try to resolve and alleviate the concern and the issues that, that do get brought up with and that do arise with the Sheriff Valley as it is now. I guess my other question would be, and, and, and just and, and for the record, I, I work at City Hall too, so I, I understand right. the process and I know what you guys are going through and I know, um, you know, there's been a lot of a lot more enforcement with the valets. I know, um, I, um, you know, I know City Valet has been up to, uh, you know, up City Hall to, you know, what other valet companies to go over the new rules and regulations. I understand all that. Has, has there been a discussion with the city to maybe stretch the zone or reconfigure it? In other words, can they slide it up the street a little and maybe add to it, or are they just not for, um, in other words, the valet zone is in front of Fiori right now, right? And right. It's, let's say it's two, uh, it's, it's two car lengths long, let's just say. I don't know, let's say it's 100 feet, but I'm just using a ballpark figure. I don't know how long it is. It is Right. Could, yeah, it's exactly. about two cars. Exactly. Exactly. Is there a way they can make a three car lane to maybe slide it up? Or they just hide it's a hybrid, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. And we can only pretty much request ballet spots in front of Luca. We can't ask for it in front of you. No, I understand. I understand. And, you, and you still run into the problem where you know people are missing the zone, whether you move it up or even if you expand it, then you know if you expand it, you're still taking a spot away. If you're going to do that, you might as well just put it right in front of the restaurant. And, you know, I mean, I have, you know, Luca's business. I get the opportunity to valet for them, which I'm grateful for. So for me, yeah, like, I see no gain except that my operation would run a lot smoother if there was just an extra spot just to pull them out. Because, you know, it's it's just a crazy year, and, and, and it's, it's a difficult job that, you know, to do it. But they already have valet. If they had it there and it was just an extra spot for me to pull the cars out and pull them out, it would it would really be helpful. Well, I have a problem with this. I've had problems since you people came. I've lived on the street for 22 years. You're going to take away a two hour parking for anybody to be used there. <coughs> and we work so hard to get the commercial vehicles off the side street so they can go on hand of the street and do their groceries. I mean, what are you going to do with that driveway? Just people pull out, but people want to pull out and pull out. What happens with that building in the back? With the driveway, that's we run we spaces have back there. We have spaces back there, too. We got a car. That's room to eight. That's parking. Five. Well, we would, we would be, it would be from 5 p.m. So five. the five hours is still. The other, the other three hours. That somebody could be lucky and 
they don't know if it's a two-hour park. And it's a difficult. I, I, I just, I, I, I've been there. I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with all this valet. I'm really not happy with it. The street is congested. You want valet. Brico has valet. Uh, Fiore has valet. You're going around in circles. They park up, park down. They park near the hydrant. Half of Fiore parks beyond the, uh, the tree. They take two spots. I've seen it. And then they park in front of the hydrant. And then they get mad. They get indignant. They say, well, what's off and on? We're residents. We're residents. We understand that. We understand that it's a sensitive issue with the residents. But I, have, I have with a it. serious problem with this valley. I really do. I really do. I have a serious problem. This is a request that they take seriously, and they, they take the issue with the amenity that they have as valley parking now. They take it seriously. Um, if you were to vote to approve this, it's something that they would continue to take seriously and um, do everything they can to abide by and use the two spaces that would be allowed in front of the storefront. Um, they wouldn't want to congest up the sidewalk traffic either. The valet zone and the stand would be inside the foyer um, of the restaurant. Like I said, we understand it is a sensitive issue. It is a touchy issue around if the I entire. I say in my heart, I could do it on a, say a six month basis and see what happens. Then how do we get it back if it don't work? Do you know what I mean? Once you give it, you're not getting, once you open the package, you're not do you guys think that the sign you have is sufficient? Uh, we did our own research and walking down the street at night, the yellow font on the white background, maybe that's part of the problem. We put it on a black background now with the yellow, but the problem is, is that you're not allowed to put the sign in the street. Yeah. Um, it depends on who's working that night. Sometimes they let you. You know, We try to do it. Sometimes they don't have a problem with Sometimes they try to do it. It's sort of difficult. What, what's the city? What, what is the city like to tell me? Is there like do they have like a, an official stance on what they want? They also speak to uh, the neighborhood council. No, but they, is there like a, is there a certain um, there's no like prerequisite or like a predetermined if you share you can't anybody can apply. Okay. We're just trying to improve the situation. Yeah. I think if we did get the two spaces right. out front, we could get the street moving quickly, and if we would think it would be a great improvement. We'd certainly have more control over the way it's taken care of, too. No, I don't think they have, like, a guideline that's saying a certain right. number of seats you can apply or not. I don't believe so, no. Any other council members, questions, concerns, comments? Okay. Anyone out there? Go, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie Hogue, Henchman Street. Uh, and I guess now I'm speaking as the president of uh, NURA, uh, not necessarily supporter of host. But just to say that at our ZLC meeting, um, we discussed stipulating in our letter that if the city were to approve this, they make the uh, parking in those two spaces after midnight resident only. So that was kind of a compromise that we reached. And we will be putting that in our letter of support that we would ask if, if the city does grant this valid parking, that then it becomes resident only after midnight. So For the residents who are home from midnight to 8? I, we had a, an extremely uh, lengthy discussion. We allocated half an hour for it on our agenda and actually went a little over. And there was a lot of, a lot of discussion. I would say everything you brought up was aired. Um, people got a little exercised at, at uh, certain points, but um, in the end, the vote was uh, was to support. So I, I do feel that. Everything was brought out and, and the residents discussed it. But I just wanted to give you the information that would be going into our letter about that parking situation. Of course, that's only a recommendation to the city, too. Right. We can't, yeah. can't make it. Yeah. But. Anybody else? Comments? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Victor Pond, Atlantic Avenue. I should mention that there was one thing that hasn't been here, and that is it's my memory that Luca expanded three years ago, four six, years ago? Six, six. six years ago. Um, which expansion, one might point out, might have exacerbated the problem. What was the capacity before the expansion? 150 before. We added about 100. Uh -huh. We added about 800 seats. Anyone else? 
Does anyone want to uh, make a motion? to support this um, actually I mean, I'd like to support it on a, a trial basis but uh, yeah, I, feel that I guess we can't do that no. but um, actually and if it would open up say after midnight of 11, mm -hmm. about 11 o'clock could, could you open up to 11 o'clock pretty much I would say yeah most yeah, of the, the dinner reservations are in by 9 or 9 30 okay. you know so they should be out by 11 as soon as the cars are done and we're finished we'd be happy to to open up to our resident as early as possible. And what you have before you right now is an application to the Boston Transportation for valet parking permit at this location. That's what they're, that's what they're asking for. So what is your motion? My motion is to support it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and have it open up with the proviso to open up to residents after 11 o'clock. But that is a no pocket person. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to interrupt, but Hand of the street, no residents parking. There is no resident parking. Well, it's a two-hour parking. Space. That is a two-hour parking. But that's and that's as Stephen said, that's going to become a residence. The two hours. Later. When okay. it becomes, okay. it's only word of mouth. When it becomes, that is a two-hour parking for visitors, uh, for residents. I believe it's for residents two hours, but I've seen residents get tagged on two hours because they should be in a resident spot. We don't have too many. Too many two hour parking spaces. I mean, I know this is a complicated situation, but we're giving up a spot here, we're giving up a spot here, and we're giving up a spot on the corner. How about I solve the problem here? How about I motion that we deny? Um, well, we, have a we have a motion on the floor right well, now. No one has seconded, have you? No, it hasn't been seconded. No, second. no, it has not been seconded. Mm -hmm. Point of order. <clears throat> you can't add something to their whatever they submit to. You no, can't. no, no, okay. so you can't. I can't vote on that. No, okay. no, we can't. And also, those provisos <clears throat> we've discussed those before. They really don't have a lot. You've got to vote on the application that's Thank submitted you. to the city. So it's nice to add those and. It's great to report to the letter, but you're voting on the applications for in front of the city, and the applications for two valet parking spaces in front of Luca. So, do you want to look at your motion again? I will, I'll, I'll make a motion to support. Support okay. the application for two valet parking spaces. Do I have a second on the motion? Okay, I don't have a, um, I don't have a second. All right, would anybody else like to make a motion? Yeah, a motion to deny. Anyone? Denying, uh, okay, so we have a motion on the floor to deny the application for valley parking at uh, 226 Hanover Street. Luca, do I have a second? All in favor of denying this application, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And those opposed, please raise your hand. You're opposing the denial. Two. Okay. 72, not to support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.